All right, so it's been a full month with the M5 iPad Pro and I've been getting the same questions over and over. Who is this iPad really for and should you upgrade from the M4? Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, then you know I've been running my M4 iPad Pro as my main computer for over a year. I push it hard productivity, content creation, multitasking, you name it. And with iPadOS 26, it feels even more powerful than ever before as multitasking gets smoother, window management is cleaner, and honestly, it made me fall in love with the iPad as a serious work machine all over again. So naturally, when Apple announced the M5 iPad Pro, I was curious, excited, and also a little skeptical. Could it really make my setup feel even better? And after a month of me using it, let's dive in. Oh, and quick note, the review unit that I got for the M5 iPad Pro was in space black, but my daily driver is the silver one with cellular and nano texture glass. You'll see both in this video. Just wanted to throw that out there. So after a month of consistent use in this video, I'll give you my personal take about my experience, what's actually changed, and if it's enough to justify an upgrade. All right, so first let's start off with the star of the show, the new M5 chip. The M5 is Apple's most refined iPad Pro chip ever. You're looking at roughly 15 to 20% improvement in CPU and GPU performance in real world tasks. But here's the thing that I realized when using this iPad. It's not just about speed. It's actually more about efficiency, consistency, and thermal control. The M5 can sustain heavy workloads longer and runs a bit cooler. So if you're tackling 4K video editing, complex renders, or juggling multiple apps for hours, this actually matters and it does make a difference. But for everyday tasks like going through emails, browsing the internet, note-taking, or doing light edits, the M4 is still a beast. Honestly speaking, you won't even notice a huge difference from the M4 to the M5. But you see, Apple's approach here is refinement over revolution. The M5 is for future-proofing or for users upgrading from an iPad Pro M2 or older or coming from an iPad Air and finally trying to make that jump to the iPad Pro. But from a daily workflow perspective, let me be straight with you. If you're on an M4, you probably don't need to upgrade. That iPad is still insanely capable. But if your workflow is like mine, constantly editing and exporting high resolution videos, graphic design, juggling cloud-based projects, switching between multiple creative apps, then the M5's improvements are noticeable. Exports are slightly faster, high resolution brushes feel smoother, and the iPad just stays consistent under heavy load. And trust me, when I was reviewing this, I put it under some really rigorous tasks. You should consider upgrading to the M5 iPad Pro if you rely on video editing or 3D rendering, AI-based creative tools, heavy multitasking, planning to keep your iPad for at least four to five years, or using external displays with 120 hertz support. But if your usage is mostly reading, writing, streaming, or casual note-taking, the M4 is already more than enough. To be honest, the M4 iPad Pro is still overkill for most people, and I feel like a lot of people who even have an M4 iPad Pro aren't even really using it to its full potential. Now, one of the things that I love about my M4 iPad Pro that I also really enjoy with this M5 is the nano texture glass display, which drastically reduces glare and glossiness, which is super helpful when I'm editing graphics or editing videos or when I'm working outdoors. But here's the catch. You can only get the nano texture glass display on the iPad Pro if you get either the one terabyte or two terabyte storage option. And on top of paying so much for higher tier models, you still have to pay an additional $100 to get the nano texture display. That brings the price of the iPad to over $2,000 if you want it with a nano texture glass display. But you can literally get the same experience for just 50 bucks with the Paperlike 3 screen protector. It uses the newest evolution of Nano Dots technology, delivering their signature paper feel experience that also drastically removes glare and reflections. The texture feels great, giving you smooth and consistent resistance when you write or draw. And installation is seamless as Paperlike 3 introduces the Butterfly application system, which is a redesigned method that makes applying your Paperlike a lot easier 
cleaner, and more reliable than ever. Also, you can just scan the QR code for an interactive on-screen guide that walks you through step-by-step -step instructions for a seamless installation right on your iPad. And what's really nice is that it's also very easy to keep clean, especially if you use your cleaning kit. So if you're serious about note-taking or digital art on your iPad and want the best writing or drawing experience out there, along with drastically reducing glare and reflections, then Paperlike 3 has you covered. And I have a link to it in the description below. Be sure to check them out. Now, another thing from the M4 iPad Pro that I enjoy on this M5 one is the OLED 120 hertz panel. It's beautiful, bright, you get deep blacks, and it's a reference mode for accurate color. Now let's discuss battery life. So I didn't really notice any improvements with battery life as it's about the same as the M4, which is honestly pretty good. But with charging, now that is a different story. You see the M5 is the first iPad to truly support fast charging. With a 60 watt adapter, you can hit 50% in just 30 minutes. So for someone like me who travels a lot and relies on the iPad as a main machine, that's huge. The M5 also gets Wi-Fi 7, better overall connectivity, and better external support. I tested 120 hertz output on a Samsung monitor and it worked beautifully. Hopefully Apple Studio display support comes soon, but even now connectivity improvements are noticeable for heavy users. All right, so it's time for my verdict. Is it worth upgrading? Here's my take. Yes, if you want the absolute best iPad experience and need every ounce of performance. Yes, if your workflow is iPad first like mine and you rely on it as a main machine. But no, if you already have an M4 and aren't even hitting its limits. Think of the M5 iPad Pro as a polishing perfection rather than reinventing the wheel. You get smoother performance, better sustained speed, fast charging, and small but real efficiency gains. And like I keep saying, most M4 owners won't need it, but if you're coming from an older iPad or pusher device with heavy creative work, then yeah, the M5 feels next level. All right, guys, so that's a wrap on my breakdown after a month with the M5 iPad Pro. It's incredible, but the value really depends on how you really use it. But the question is, have you upgraded to the M5 already or are you still debating? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what iPad you're using and if this one tempts you. Now, a lot of people ask me what wallpaper I use on my iPad. It's actually wallpapers that I've designed myself. And the beauty of Liquid Layers, this wallpaper pack of mine, is the fact that it takes advantage and inspiration from Apple's own liquid glass design and kind of brings it with color and vibrancy. And I've got many different colors and variations, as you can see. If you want something that's even more minimalistic, I've got a second variation as well of the same exact colors, something that's a little more minimalistic, yet still with the Liquid Layers design. And even the minimalistic options look very clean and nice. And if you get this wallpaper, paper pack. I'm also including free iPhone versions as well. So if you do like these wallpapers and you are interested in getting them, I've got a link to it in the description below. Also, if this video helped, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so, and turn on notifications because trust me when I say this, I've got some really exciting iPad productivity content coming up and I don't want you missing out. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.